Hello everyone, Subject Zero here. Now more than ever, we will see more and more prominent members of society talking about artificial intelligence and how it will be either good or bad for society. Like Elon Musk points out, it will probably be the end of our civilization. But the fundamental question that we must ask is, how far are we from actually developing this AI? No, I'm not talking about the Boston Dynamic robots that can only work for a few hours at a time. I'm talking about the Terminator Judgment Day type of scenario. In this video, I'm not going to talk about how we're going to get crushed by the machine. Instead, I want to show you, my dear viewer, how far we are from creating any AI that resembles a Terminator and how long it might still take to get there. To begin, we need to understand one simple thing about humans, and that is the computational power of our brains. The average brain has an estimated number of neurons in the billions, or 100 billion neurons to be more precise. And by now, we know that each neuron is capable of in between 200 and 1000 hertz of equivalent computing power. Yes, it looks slow, but if you multiply one by the other and you get 200 terahertz. Now that is impressive, but even that is wrong due to many factors, one of them being that neurons aren't linearly connected or bidimensional. They connect to many others which facilitate transferring information and that is estimated in the thousands of connections. This means that we can only estimate how powerful the brain is because of the multiple connection networks that it can achieve, which drastically enhances its capabilities. If we take this into account, some scientists estimate that the human brain sits at about one exaflop or 10 to the 18 power floating points of operation. Yes, that is the amount of processing power needed for you to do the daily things that you do. And even the dumbest of your friends use that much computer power daily. If we make a comparison with your average computer at home and considering the average graphic card that has about 40 teraflops, not the average home graphic cards, right? You would need about a thousand of those to get the same processing power. If we consider the G force GTX 1080, which depending on the model, you will get about nine teraflops. That's 400,000 of them stacked side by side and on top of each other that comes out to a cube of 622 meters cubed. That is eight by five by eight by five by eight by five roughly. That is the size of a small house. And here is where the first barrier starts. The amount of energy needed for all of them would be about 72 megawatt hour, while the brain consumes only 20 watts. So you get my point. The fastest graphic card available as of the making of this video is about 17.6 petaflops, which is still a thousand times slower. Or to mimic the brain, you will need a thousand of those graphic cards working together to get to do what the brain does. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the main point of this video. Because to understand how difficult it has been to recreate robots that can do what we can do, you need to understand this simple calculation. And it has defined AI research for the past three decades. To put this into perspective, you would need a room the size of an apartment just to mimic the brain activity of one person for one second. Now imagine this for the entire world. 30 years ago, and you would need an entire building and so on. We came a long way, but we are still way far from reaching the desired goal. One thing is for sure though, it will be extremely necessary for space exploration as though for our daily routines, the things that will change first are the repetitive and simple tasks like driving for instance, which is already happening. The problem is that Hollywood made us believe that everything would happen in an instant and that machines would become self-aware and destroy us all. But that is very unlikely due to the reasons that I stated previously. Just the energy side of things is already a huge limit for machines to take over the world in the next decade or so. And then putting that computing powers into the size of a brain is constantly proving itself to be harder than we thought at first. If there is one thing that evolution taught us is that that everything must be energy efficient to survive and computers aren't really that good in this case, or at least they won't be for quite a while. Just look at how much power was needed to beat the best Go player. Most people only see the surface of these AI workings, but in reality, this is what is happening behind the scenes. See, it's not just a simple computer beating a human. It's a lot of work that is always, for whatever reason, 
disregarded by most people. And another thing that doesn't happen much is that humans aren't giving them any chances to figure the machine out. So if the computer wins, everyone thinks it will be the end of the world. I'm also pretty sure that if humans keep playing these machines, eventually we will find ways to beat them because of one of the most complex problems of human behavior, and that is trolling and everything that goes with it, like sarcasm, for instance. Those two things that I mentioned are extremely complex to teach a machine. And I see this every day in machine learning, but this is a topic for another video. The future as I see it will be the likes of Blade Runner, not with the pollution stuff, but the creation and amelioration of biological machines. Robots will be good at solving recurring and boring tasks, but when it comes to complex stuff, biological machines will be the easier way to go. Now, I'm not saying that we won't be able to replicate the human brain in silico. What I'm saying is that the limitations are far too great as of now. But why do I think this way? Well, the answer is quite simple. The human brain is already developed and it will be easier to clone and upgrade than to build machines that mimic humans. Now with CRISPR technology, we are closer than ever to reach that future. Side by side and you can see how much better the human brain is. Unless a huge breakthrough happens in the next decade or so, machines that can do what we do are still very unlikely and not energetically viable. If it's going to be good or better, Bad for us, that is a question for another video, but one thing is for sure, it will be much easier to achieve a replicant than a robot. At the end of the day, what is really going to happen is that we will reach the limitations of in silico processing, which in turn will make us consider organic components to achieve what we want. In comparison to size and energy used for solving complex tasks, we beat machines by far. Alright folks, that's it, we're done here.